public has, give stability uh, to investor and create confidence. But this is actually not enough because robust policies have to be um, accompanied, uh, have to be accompanied by an effective institutional and administrative support and allow for attractive financing options um, to be present in the market. So we, through interviews with these stakeholders, we have identified four major barriers. The first one, which was mentioned by many, was the length and lack of predictability of the process to receive the tax exemptions uh, mentioned in the law 5707. Other sources have told us that since the new um, administration, the CNE was present, uh, this has changed quite a lot. So this is a process which is evolving, uh, but I still wanted to collect this um, as an issue for further consideration. The second major barrier is the uncertainty regarding the implementation of the feeder tariff premium, which is mentioned in law 5707. I guess everybody knows. And um, this may, uh, mainly applies for solar um, projects. We're going to see this all much more in detail afterwards. The third one is the absence of public funds, of, of a public financing mechanism um, to cover the incremental costs for renewable energy um, developers um, and also to provide the risk guarantee uh, for them to have access to commercial finance. And, and lastly, the difficulty in accessing international financing, which is, I guess, a problem, an issue which is common to lots of recipient countries because of proliferation of new funds dedicated to renewables and energy efficiency is one of the concerns that we also had from our stakeholders. So let's talk about the first um, barrier which was mentioned. Um, so there was, here is um, a reconstitution of the pr process that um, project developers and investors have to go through um, to get their tax, their import tax exemption tax. Uh, we have not heard of any uh, project developers who have applied for the revenue tax exemptions. If anyone has already gone through that process, to hear. Um, but so one of the concerns was, which was raised was the, actually the length of the process and the lack of institutionalization. So um, the, the lack of documents available um, in the public um, and uncertainty about how, which, how long each step would take. So, but CD figures have shown that um, application for these tax exemptions and also for concession have increased considerably over the last years. Um, and developers have also stated that the process have, processes have become much more um, fast um, since the new administration is in place. Um, but one thing that's worth mentioning is that all these improvements are, are likely to be very fragile because it seems like um, these changes and this expediting of measures is very um, is led by a small group of very active um, policymakers within CME. So this would have been, would need to be more institutionalized so as to resist um, the transformation um, in the teams if there were if there were to be. Um, one idea which was welcomed by um, our interviewees was the idea of a unique window or a ventanilla unica and this is the idea of a single window acting as a interministerial coordinating entity. This would help um, the, the, the project um, developers to go to one single place, to one single institution and apply and give their, their, their file and their application and then um, the, the application would go through that interministerial process, but internal. Um, this would help to mainstream the application procedures to obtain the, and the concession and financial incentives. Um, the design and the governance of this single window is open. There are a lot of international 
um, there are a lot of countries who have various different um, structures to, to have this, um, this sort of focal point for, applicate, for, um, for project developers. But some principles that we can uh, already state at that stage is that access to information, so open access to information on the financial uh, possibilities is very important. And um, the efficiency of internal coordination and the transparency of that internal coordination to the project uh, developers and to the people applying is also very important. This gives a faith and a, a confidence in the stability of the, of the, of the window. Because we don't want that window to transform itself into a black box. Um, so, perhaps. The second barrier, and perhaps one that has been emphasized by the most of uh, the people that we have interviewed, were, was the uncertainty on the implementation of the vegan tariff frame. Um, if you look at the first line, um, the, the photovoltaic connected to a higher power grid at 25 kilowatt hour, and uh, the photovoltaic um, connected to a grid of equal more or less than 25 kilowatt hour, you will see that these rates are extremely high um, for an uh, on an international benchmark. And so what we have found out were, were that, was that investors have been attracted by the, the incentives, by, uh, by the rates which are mentioned in the law, but um, then find out that the rates are not being implemented and lose confidence in the investment climate and in the reliability of these incentives. And this is, this has been, um, um, the, there have been some cases um, which we have gathered through our interviews which um, give us this, um, this information. So, but one of the reasons why the funding has not been implemented also is that because the loss of 577 um, does not set this premium as a, a loan standing support mechanism. It actually comes up with a with a fund, which um, should be funding um, the, the the premium system. So um, this was perhaps the, this is the third barrier that we have identified is actually a lack of domestic um, financial support, public and private, for renewable energies. What what? Um, review of international experience tells us is that in countries where capital markets are not ready to finance renewable energy projects adequately because of structural lack of capital, because of lack of awareness and experience from the project developers, um, it's a good idea to create a specialized financial institution um, to leverage the amount of private capital. So how this works is um, there is a fund set up with either public money or a blend of um, domestic public finance and international support and this fund provides um, long-term concessional loans or technical assistance to project developers or to banks um, so that they can channel these funds and, and add their own funds to it. So the Dominican Republic has already designed the overall principle of such a fund. It's actually in its law on hydrocarbons, number uh, 112. Um, and the, the law uh, institutes a special fund which is replenished by uh, a tax differential on fossil fuels. So it's a 5% levy on uh, the fossil fuels. And the law 5707 further stipulates that the public fund issued by that 5% levy um, should pay for the FIT incentives, so the premium that we see, the premium rates that we've seen in the, in the, past, in the last slide, and also provide um, upfront capital costs for community based projects, so small subsidies for um, either rural electrification projects or um, basically for rural electrification projects. 